Looks cool, right? So, recently we got an amazing gift from one of our subscribers. This device is the educational microprocessor set that would allow you to study the architecture and operations of the Intel 8088 processor. And it was produced in 1988 in Riga, in Latvia, by the WEF Radio Electronics Factory. Somewhat it is close to legendary Meets Altair computer, but there was one difference, because this very thing you could not buy if you are just a private person. It was sold only to enterprises and companies, and it costed pretty big money, around 400 Soviet rubles. And this set has one cool feature. There is a special slot where you could install various expansion cards. And those would give you a really big field for experiments on, say, developing and prototyping of various devices, or controlling some external devices, and so on. So it was pretty interesting. So a joke about Soviet Arduino was actually only partly a joke. So let's look closer and inside also make a little restoration and, of course, a test run. And before we continue, a little announcement for you, because next week we're gonna have a long-awaited episode about the legendary Scala computer of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Well, it's gonna be really interesting, so don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss it. And if you want to support our work, join us on our Patreon page, where you'll find a lot of unique Chernobyl things. So, link is in the description below. So, the centerpiece of our device is Ukrainian clone of Intel 8080A processor, which is called KR580 VM80. And with all attached chips, it formed its so-called 580 series set. Well, the spine in the West, the 8080 processor, the original one, relatively quickly was replaced with more sophisticated chips in the USSR, as cloned version was really popular up to early 90s. The WEF factory that produced this device was famous not only for good electronics, but for a good design as well. So I have to say, the device looks pretty stylish and convenient to use. Well, our version is tabletop, but there existed also a version mounted inside a special suitcase, and its look gives me certain strong associations. If you know what I mean. Unfortunately, we do not have at the moment any of those cards, but even without them it's possible to do pretty much using these built-in controls. And all the controls are mounted on the same panel, they are easily accessible, and here we have a few sets of buttons. The left group is for the directives. Uh, for example, pressing this will allow you to read and write to the memory. And all in all, there are two memory banks, two kilobytes of ROM that contains a monitor program, and two kilobytes of RAM. So here we have read or modify register of contents, then transfer for transferring control to user program, checksum for determining the checksum of a memory array, constant fill for filling a memory array with a certain constant, memory move for moving a memory array in an address space. This space key is used to separate multiple variables during your input, and finally it is execute that signifies the end of your directive. The keys to the right I use it to input numbers in the hexadecimal code, and uh, the keys from 4 to F you use to call the identifiers of microprocessor registers. And those buttons on the right I use, for example, to initiate a reset or an interrupt request, as well to put the system in a step mode. Well, in this case, all the LEDs above will become active and it will be possible to see step by step how it is going. There are three groups of LEDs, so this one indicates the status information of processor, above them is indication of the data bus and the address bus. And there are six seven segment indicators that display the input and output information. And finally, to the left of the expansion card slot, there are three LEDs that normally are not glowing and they indicate a malfunction of a certain power line, such as low voltage for instance. Alright, uh, so this all is pretty dirty, because it was stored for a long time on the shelf untouched, uh, there is a solid dust, some scratches, and this silver-like finish is missing on the edges. So I suggest to make a little restoration, also take a look inside. So it's very simple to open it, you just need to remove these six screws, uh, by the way I noticed that one of them had a factory seal, and then we lift the upper cover up. Frankly, I expected that everything would be mounted on the bottom, not on the top, but, well, we will see. And when I have been taking it all out, from inside fell a little road paper. 
it says incorrect stepping in a command step mode. So I have to say this is not a first time where I found such papers inside the Soviet equipment of the late 80s and that's pretty much a Soviet approach in nutshell of that times I mean. So the thing is that if you check the papers that were shipped together with the equipment there would be likely written that it successfully passed all the end of production tests and uh, only an end user would discover that actually something doesn't work and they would send it to service center and only those guys who sit there they would open and see actually this little surprise. Uh, there are certain reasons why it was done like this and uh, share your ideas in the comments I will tell you if you are right or not. Okay we will see later in the action how does it work. For now that's what it looks like. In the center there is a crate with a couple of cards and uh, there are two thick cables coming from the front panel. Well I have to say I very much like how those connectors secured. And we have here a large power supply that brings plus 5, minus 5 and plus 12 volts to the crate. Well I really don't know if original 8080 processor can do this but this Soviet clone can successfully work if instead of plus 12 volts you provided it with one more line of plus 5 volts. Now let's take out the crate and take a closer look at it. And below we have a front panel board, well we will check it also later. Well just look at this. That's beautiful. Wires here not soldered but tightly rolled over. Well I nearly not used technique nowadays. Just look at this, it looks so aesthetical. Ok now let's take out the processor card, well it appeared to be not very easy operation because connectors stuck in during the years very tightly but here it goes. Wait a bit you gonna be kidding me. No really no indication and no reset after it gets hot. I remind you the casing was sealed. This is what the main card looks like so here we have the CPU itself, also ROM, RAM chips and also buffer register that provides the bus functioning. Everything is really simple but pretty effective. The second card has a programmable peripheral interface chip, uh, that chip is a clone of Intel 8255. And this card can the wires of the expansion slot for external cards and also cables from the front panel because those are also considered external device. Well that panel we are also going to remove as well because I need to clean the buttons. Well the front panel board is very simple, here are just LEDs, some buttons and those iOS 324 indicators. But the color and texture of the material the PCB was made from I have to say it's pretty unusual because uh, that was normally used by Czechoslovak and Hungarian factories, not by Soviet factories. But anyways we have it here. And finally we remove this power supply. Well it's really huge but at the same time all parts are easily accessible. I checked it, it works perfectly, there are no problems with capacitors so nothing to change here. The only one thing appeared that uh, there are a few mounts are broken so I will glue them back later. The next step was some cleaning, extensive washing and drying of plastic parts and now it looks a little bit better. But I will additionally paint uh, the places where the silver like finish is gone and after some thinking I decided to first assemble it back. Well to be honest that was pretty a challenge because most of screws are really hardly accessible but anyways I managed to do that. And additionally I also cleaned the bottom part which in the corners had a lot of sunflower seed shells. Well a signature mark of Slavic programmers. Once everything was assembled back I cleaned it once more and then I grabbed some silver epoxy paint and started to cover the damaged surface. Well ideally of course would be to use the aerograph but unfortunately I don't have one. So we also had here some darker and lighter spots on plastic so I did it like that. I took a paint, placed a few drops and distributed them around in more uniform way using a piece of paper. Well the camera maybe doesn't catch the difference that much but all in all I have to say it became closer to its initial look. 
Okay, it is time to try this device in action, so we need to write some program. Uh, I have to say that personally I uh, wrote something on assembler or in the hexadecimal codes in my university, which was almost 15 years ago. So instead I found a program that was already written specifically for this very complex. It will just show us the word hello on a display. So let's try it. First we switch the system on and then reset it by pressing the reset button. And then I press this button to modify the memory contents and then using the numeric keypad enter the address. And then I need to press a space button and enter the hexadecimal value for that very cell. Then this operation I need to repeat for every cell value, space, value, space and so on. But after I enter the last one I press the execute button. Then I press the ST button and transfer the control to my program. Then I call it by the address and press the execute button once more. And this is what we have. As you can see the LEDs are not glowing in this mode because it would be pretty pointless. Uh, so to see them in action we need to press this button to enable a step mode. Then we can reset the CPU once more. Uh, the memory will retain the program, so we can call it again by entering the address and pressing the execute. And now by pressing the step button we can see our program working in action. Well, what can I say, I really much enjoyed playing with this thing and, uh, you know, I'm sad I didn't have it back in 1995, let's say, that would be really cool. It's of course very obsolete for the modern times, but back then it was something really cool. But, you know, I think I'll keep an eye on the local marketplaces, maybe I will find some of that uh, expansion cards on sale and we can have a continuation. If you would like to have one, please write us in the comments. In meanwhile, please don't forget to subscribe because we're gonna have something really interesting next week. And if you wish to support our work, join us on the Patreon page where you will find a lot of unique Chernobyl and technological things. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.